ask you to take yourself off mute there real quick. There we go. All right, perfect. All right, uh, we'll start it out. Um, we'll do one question at a time. Like I said, just, you know, we got a lot of hands raised and get through as many people as possible. Uh, so let's lead it off with Austin Ward. Austin, go ahead. Hey, Parker, uh, can, congrats on the promotion. Um, can you take us through a little bit the off-season discussions with Coach Day and, and why maybe you felt like uh, you deserve this opportunity? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, you know, thank you, first of all. Thanks for having me here. Um, it's a huge honor. There, there's, when you say uh, earned or deserved, or I'm not quite sure what you said, but that's, that's never the case. It's one of those things that, you, you know, at this place, the tradition, the history, and just kind of all the work everybody's put in before me, I just hope to kind of, you know, keep that going and enhance it as best I can. Uh, you know, I've been around here for a little bit, little bit of time, kind of know the system and kind of know the ins and outs of the place. And so one of the main goals is to just try to keep some continuity and, and enhance what we're doing without, uh, you know, a huge turnover and huge change. And, I, and, and that's one of those things I'm very fortunate to be in this position that I, I feel like I'm capable of doing that. So. All right, we'll go next to Nathan Baird from Cleveland.com. Parker, can you kind of just go into your, your special teams background, why that's something that at some point in your career you developed a passion for? Yeah, um, well, that's actually the first, my first special teams job was here. I was Coach Meyer's intern. And so, I, you know, I played quarterback in high school and college. And my first job, I coached high school ball, coached quarterbacks back in Georgia. And then I came up here, I was at Capital University, and I was coaching quarterbacks over there. And uh, Coach Meyer's staff had just kind of, come together in that 2012 season and I was just looking for any opportunity to be a part of this program and there was a special teams internship available and I didn't really know what it meant I wasn't exactly sure what uh what the details were gonna were gonna be and I just kind of I'll do whatever you need anything I'm, I'm in count me in and I and you know be, getting to learn from coach Meyer early kind of the the not just the system because it's really not about a system of plays it's about a just the entire culture of the building was, was huge. And that happened for me in 2012. Um, and then I, I, I worked as a graduate assistant in 2013, working with both the receivers and, and the special teams. And then when I left, I, I kind of got to take some of that with me and develop my own a little bit. But that was really my first, was here as, a, as an intern, just wherever I can fit in, I, I will. And, that, that's, and from there, it's kind of developed into something that I understand uh, impacts the game a lot. And I get to coach all the players, which is something I really enjoy. All right, next up, we'll go to Dave Biddle from 247. Dave. Thanks, Mike. Hi, Parker. Nice to meet you. Um, um, looking at your special teams this year, what are kind of the strengths that you expect from the special teams this year? Maybe what's something that concerns you right now when you look at your special teams? It's a good question. Um, strengths. I mean, I mean the, any, any, any roster that has as much depth and as much skill as we do, a lot of speed, a lot of physicality, that, that you can typically take advantage of that in, in the kicking game. One of the things is, you know, a 40 yard at least play that that stuff shows up a little bit more so that's always going to help us guys that can run and hit and play fast and um you know good football players are good on special teams you know it happens one way or the other either they're good on special teams and then they develop or they're just good football players and they play well on special teams so that's something that i think will, will, will help us um and then you know concerns anytime you have and turnover in any position you know we're, we're losing some guys we had a on that punt team, Luke Farrell and Pete Warner and Tuff Borland and Barron and, you know, all, all the guys that, that have a lot of experience and Drew Crispin, obviously, you know, and so we're kind of replacing a bunch of those um, key personnel in certain spots. But, uh, you know, we've had a great spring and we've got a bunch of really tough, accountable guys that I think will be able to step in and do a really good job for us. Thank you. All right, next we'll go to Dan Hope from 11 Warriors. Dan. Hey, Parker, just what's it been like the last couple of years working alongside Matt Barnes when he was special teams coordinator? And how much does it help you to still have him here as a resource that you can lean on? Uh, it means everything. I mean, he, he I'm, I'm sure you guys have gotten to know him through his time here, and he's outstanding. He's extremely detailed. He's extremely well thought out. Everything that he does has purpose. And what, what it does is it, it allows me to have another. I mean, I, in a lot of ways, I feel like I was his sounding board for the past couple of years. And he had a great background and, and I had a, I helped in the continuity of things that have, had been here before he got here. Um, but he really took it and ran and did his thing, which obviously did a great job. And that's some, that's kind of what he is right now for me. It's a sounding board of, Hey, what do you think about this? Well, you know, these guys doing this. And the other thing is during drills, because he understands what we're trying to do so well, you know, he can help take a group of these guys and go do specifically exactly what we need. And, and, and there's just a little bit less, um, 
you know, learning curve for a guy that doesn't quite know the ins and outs as well when they're running some of the, the drills in the spring. And it's been, it's been huge, really helpful. All right, next we'll go to Bill Rabinowitz from the Columbus Dispatch. Hi, Parker. Welcome to Ohio State. Um, or nice to talk to you, I guess I should say. Yeah. Um, give me your impressions of, you've got a new punter, a new kicker. I'm assuming that Jesse and, and Austin are, are the, the projected starters in that, those positions. Could you give me your impressions of those guys and how they've, how they've uh, kind of progressed this spring? Uh, well, it, it would be Jesse and probably Jake, I think, is the one you're assuming is uh, for the kicker. And, and, you know, Jake's – Jake, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you're good. I get it. Uh, assume starter is, is a – you know, it's kind of a – it's a competition, always is. We'll always play the best player at every position. Um, you know, returning guys, you know, Jake kicked last year. You know, I don't know if we expected him to. I don't – you know, there's a lot of situations where he went in and performed really well. You know, he kicked in the national championship game for us. And so right. the, he being – he's not a new, new player – um, Jesse, obviously, you know, if he wins a job and everything works out, he, he will be new, um, you know, new to a lot of things. But, um, you know, his development and Jake's development has been really good. Had a great winter to get stronger and work through tough. There's a lot of things that, you know, specialists need mentally, physically, all that. And then getting with the team and doing our drills. It's the first time for some of them to go through a punt period or to go through a field goal period as the guy. And so, you know, that, that's been really good. And, and I think that, you know, their development this spring has been key and they're going to have to continue to develop through the summer and in fall camp for it to really, you know, maximize where they are. But uh, so far it's been, it's been really good. Thank you. All right, next we'll go to Doug Lamar, Cleveland.com. Hey Parker, um, just a logistical question. When you aren't working with special teams, what position groups are you helping with primarily? Um, I'm helping with the defensive backs in the defense. I, um, you know, that was something that was new to me, but uh, you know, I, in 2018, uh, or no, 19, 2019, I sat in a lot of defensive meetings with, uh, in the springtime with some of my spare time, learning the defense as it was installed. And that's been, you know, I, I'm just passionate about football in general. And so it's, it's, it's good for me. It's good for the team. I'm kind of an offensive guy in the defensive room. And then in terms of running the drills, and like Coach Barnes, Matt runs all the DB meetings and takes care of that. But I help him and make sure we'll split up and I'll go run a drill and he'll run a drill when we have a lot of guys going at the same time. That, that's where my, where my time is spent right now. Thank you. All righty, next we'll go to Tony Gerdeman, Buckeye School. Parker, Ohio State has not had a kickoff return touchdown since 2010. Jordan Hall. What are you going to do about it? Uh, we're continue to work it. You know, it's, it's been interesting um, the past couple of years with the fair catch rule being implemented. It's kind of changed a lot of teams' strategies. It's changed a lot of teams' uh, time spent. It really has. And, and the, you know, the risk reward is, is different now than it used to be. Um, I, I'm sure you guys see it on our kickoff too. It used to be a different weapon. And, and the, the fair catch rule just, it changes strategy a little bit, which, you know, it's our job to then find a way to make another, to get another advantage somewhere. Um, and, and, you know, we've, we've had some big hits in the past, like last year we had one against Indiana, we got called back for a penalty. And then that just changes your, it changes your whole mindset about what's the reward you get. Our offenses have been extremely explosive. Um, and, and that's something that you just have to weigh. Uh, we have really good returners. We have really talented guys that we can put back there. And we've worked it hard this spring. And we'll just see kind of how it goes from here. But we're, we're working it. You know, they've changed a couple other rules in terms of your wedge fits and different things that make it a little, little more difficult than it used to be to, uh, to kind of get the thing started. So we just have to be creative. Um, and to be honest with you, we, you know, we, we got to get some guys hitting some home runs. All righty. We'll go next to Tim May from Leonard Monroe. Uh, thank you very much, Micah. I was going to ask you if you had to teach Jesse that if he kicks it between the uprights, it's not six points, but that, but I digress. Uh, <laughs> Parker, do you, do you scout, uh, do you scout other, do you watch other teams, uh, video, pro, college, et cetera, to pick up tips? I mean, what is sort of like your approach to that aspect of it? Do you, do you mean on special teams? Yeah, on special yeah, teams. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, I, I, I watch everybody that will, in any film they'll let me have. And, and we have a great video library here. Um, and so, you know, every, depends if you're saying in season, out of season. A out of season, we do a lot of studies. So like, for example, kickoff return. So we'll go find and who's, you know, find some explosive kickoff returns from the last couple of years with the current rules and watch them and evaluate what are other teams doing well. Um, in, in the off season, that's kind of our punt. What are we doing? What, how are we adjusting? What are our enhancements? Punt block, just same, same type of thing. And, and we'll get with other coaches and, we'll, you know, sounding board for each other and professional development and 
what are their techniques? Are there little tips that they can give or we can, you know, and that's a fun game, obviously not giving away much, but trying to get as much as you can. Um, and then in, in season, you know, you kind of have to keep up with, with the, the current trends. So a, a, a play will happen and it'll get on sports center or teams will watch it. And then you got to expect that other teams are going to do that. So that's the big, big parts, but the little things, yeah, you got to go back and see what's worked against the opponent or the coordinator that you're facing years back, as far back as they've really been in control and just see, see what has been effective. What is not, can we enhance, can we continue? And it, it's, it's everybody, NFL, pro or college, high school, whatever's out there, we'll, we'll try and find and try and get an advantage from it. So. Thanks, man. All righty, we'll go next to Joey Kaufman from the Columbus Dispatch. Hi, Parker. Just wanted to ask again a little bit about your time as an intern back in, in 2012 with, with Urban Meyer. He's known as somebody who places a, a big priority on, on special teams. And, and, and how did that maybe change your outlook about special teams, you, either your pre appreciation for it, just kind of what lessons do you think you really learned from that time? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, I don't want to answer without giving full, you know, compliments first to Coach Meyer and kind of the whole culture that he had built, not just here, but other places. And, you know, he did teach me, kind of I alluded to it earlier, um, you know, very rarely do you get to get in front of the team, you know, as a, as a coach, as a position coach. Once, every once in a while, you know, you get in front of the team. And, and then as a special teams coordinator, you do. You get to coach the whole team. You get to talk to everybody and you get to set the tone for the day. A lot of times you're the first meeting and a lot of times you are, you know, motivating, not just the specifics of the kicking game, but of the day, the practice, the game, whatever we're doing. And, and a lot of times you have your elite players that are already playing a ton and then you, you've got to, in, you know, get the other guys to play up to that level. So there's, there's a big dynamic that, you know, it's almost a study in, you know, just human element, the human element. And, and he taught me early that that impact, it, it, it's way more than just, you know, the net punt. There's so much more that goes into it. And I, I, I learned that and I, I learned to love that and appreciate that. As a quarterback's coach or quarterback, you know, being a quarterback, you, you just, you live in a smaller world. It, it, you know, it's different. Not in, not in a smaller importance world, just in terms of what, who am I worried about and how many people am I really talking to? And then when you go talk to the, to the kicking game, the whole team, you know, and then not to mention the explosive plays that every kicking play is, there's just so much impact on a game and so much impact on, you know, the entire team where other things don't quite have that. Um, and, th and then specifically just the, the, the system and uh, the individual little techniques, and they change, they've evolved from then to now. You know, I, I could still tell you exactly how it was back then, but we don't call it the same thing for great reasons. We've, we've evolved, we've changed, and, but, but the, the foundation of fundamentals is still there. And that's when it gets exposed. If you're a good football player, play with great base, play with great feet, great eyes, great hands, and you know, football position, you'll do it well if you go really hard and do it in a kicking game. And if you don't, it'll, it'll be exposed. So that's one of the other things that I learned and I've, I've really enjoyed about it and embraced. Great question. All righty, we'll go to Patrick Murphy from 247. Patrick? Parker, good to talk to you. First of all, is that a national title ring you're, you're rocking on the hand? No, no, this is, uh, this, I don't know if you can see, I think it's out on Twitter. Is it out, we're good? I'll say, so this is the uh, Big Ten ring we just got. It was, we just got them today at practice. So literally, I just walked off the practice field and you can see, I mean, it's like hot off the press right here. So I figured I would, you know, try it on for a day or so and then I'll probably take it off and put it away. So it's, you know, fresh. Right. Well, congrats. Um, when when uh, you were asked about the kick return, you immediately said Jordan Hall. Um, you talked about how you, you played offense and, and whatnot. So I'm just interested in how you become what you do to learn special teams when you first get into this role and how you kind of fall in to that and, and get to where you are, because clearly that wasn't your specialty as, as a player. So how, do, how does one evolve into this kind of role when you played a very specific position like quarterback? Um, I think special teams is, it, it's, it's all of football kind of combined. There's so much going on and there's offensive players, defensive players, you're blocking, you're tackling, you're running, you're hitting, you're, you're scheming up, you know, you, we could get into that another time, but like you're scheming up kickoff return. And what is it? Is it a gap scheme? Is it a man's zone scheme? Like, in, and that's, those are offensive concepts. And then you're on the other side and we're, we're going to go, we're going to cover kicks. And so what's our fit? Okay, we're going to play this. We fit things the same as we do on defense. 
you know, same rules in terms of when we're spilling, when we're, you know, people say box contain, we say compressed contain. What are your, what are your fits going to be? And so now we, you know, we have overlap players. So what are you doing? I'm playing linebacker. And so a lot of the concepts, and that's, that's kind of one of our, one of our teaching methods is that the, the concepts that you learn in kicking game aren't specific to kicking game. You can apply these when you're a blitzing linebacker or when you are a receiver running a route because you're playing gunner and then you're playing receiver and then you're, a, a, you know, Josh Proctor's a gunner and he'll blitz at safety and they use a lot of those same techniques. Um, so it's not as, it doesn't get specific to special teams. Now there's a few, you know, catch and kicks is different. You don't do that on offense or defense. Blocking punts, you don't do. Downing punts, you don't do. So there's a few specifics that we have to, you know, really, really focus on and work to make sure the guys doing those jobs can be excellent at them. Uh, but in terms of, you know, how did I develop into this role? In my mind, it's, it's football. That's, that's what we do. And so, you know, we apply it um, in, in different ways. When what's the, we're attacking protections on pump block. That's what we're doing. It's no different than how are you on punt? What are we doing? We're, we're protecting. And so there's, there's some consistency between, you know, coaching an offense or coaching a defense or, you know, when I coached offense, you have to understand what the defense does as well to be able to counter and, and, and you know, work off each other. And that's, you know, you get that big picture down and then, you know, the techniques and the specifics are, you know, just something that we have to continue to work. And, and honestly, how did I develop into it? I, I worked for Coach Meyer. I worked pretty hard. Uh, you know, he promoted me. And then I got a job. Everett Withers gave me my first job, you know, coordinating special teams at James Madison. I owe him a great amount of, you know, gratitude because he took a shot on me. Um, I coached wideouts and special teams for him there. Uh, and then he took me to Texas State. So I had some experience doing that. And it kind of just grew. And Coach Meyer called me to come back. And, you know, here we are. So it's kind of been, you know, one of those type of situations. Thank you. All righty. We'll, uh, we'll do two more for Coach here. We'll go to uh, Jeremy Birmingham. Jeremy, go ahead. Hey, Parker, I don't want to take you back to your job interview, but I I'm going to try to put you on the spot. You've used the word enhance a couple times as far as changing special teams in your role. How do you specifically individually do that when, you, you know, special teams itself seems to the layperson to be kind of a dying part of football? How do you change that specifically or enhance it specifically? Um, special teams is dying in certain ways, but it's definitely not dying at all in terms of impact of the game. So you can choose if you want to view it that way. Or you can choose that it's a weapon because if the opponent sees it like that, good. We don't. So that's one of the, like I said earlier, how do you take the current rules and make them an advantage for us? And it gets tough. You know, you, you get into certain situations that you don't have as much control over. If we're going to, you know, the kickoff team for years here has been a weapon. And then if the team chooses to fair catch the ball, good. That's fine. That's not our call. We then have to find a way to keep it an advantage. And maybe that is a motivational tactic for our guys. We, we get excited because they, they're fair catching it. Good. Let them do that. And there's, then we try and take that edge to the next phase. And that's something we really can't control. But the, the weapon of our punt team, our punt return team, our punt block team, downing punts inside the 10 yard line, you know, situational football, knowing, you know, our hands and onside, those will never go away. And as much as they, as they work in other ways to, to change and evolve, um, the rules, so special teams has a different impact. It'll, the overall impact will never go down. It, it just won't. It, it, the ball moves too far every play for the impact to not be at all-time high. And, and until they, you know, limit how far you can kick a ball, then th that won't change because the, the ball field position is just such a, such a difference in, in, in winning and losing. And that's really what we're in charge of is, is how much the battle of field position can we impact. So it's kind of vague, but I, it, it's a, there's a lot going on there. It's a good question, though. We'll wrap up. Uh, we'll wrap up. Coach Parker here with Tim Hall from ninety-seven point one. Hey, uh, thanks, Parker. C kind of going off of your last point there, maybe a two-parter. You, you mentioned special teams getting diminished in certain ways, but the guys that are actually putting the foot on the football. I mean that that it's always critical. We've seen you guys win games with the punting game and kicking key field goals as well. Now, also last part, just wondering returners Garrett Wilson and Jackson Smith and Jigba last year and Demario. How's that shaping up? Is there anybody new flashing? Um, yeah, we, we've had a couple new guys, but for the most part, when you have an established crew that have done it, you know, there's less emphasis on the returning, more emphasis on the other parts of those phases, the blocking and the time ups and those type of things. You know, we, we've tried out a bunch of different guys back there. And to be honest with you, you know, it, I'm hoping that we don't have the same 
concerns next year that we did last year, you, you could not imagine the number of guys that we practiced in those roles just based on COVID scenarios, that you just don't know what's coming next. And so we, we have a lot of banked reps, as we call them, from different guys getting reps back there, running backs, receivers, DBs, you know, that are going to be available if we need them to because we've gotten a lot of reps. But we didn't emphasize, you know, the returner this spring very much. So there's not a lot of new development in, in who's going to be back there. All righty, Coach. Really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate your time. Talk to you again soon. Thank you.